Howdy Connection Group Leaders, happy Thursday. Here I am in Jerusalem. I wish I could tell you that's the Western Wall or something cool behind me. That's just Northern Jerusalem, which is still pretty awesome. Um, we're on the outskirts of town. I'm still excited to be here. Golly, have I learned a ton. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be riding high from this trip for a long time. Thank you all for praying for me. Thank you for caring for my family. A lot of y'all have done that while we've been gone, so I'm grateful for that. So I got to spend some time today at Yad Vashem. That is the Holocaust Memorial slash museum here in Jerusalem. Guys, there's there's just no words. Um, I've, I've, I've cried off and on all day long at this stuff that I saw. I've studied the Holocaust. Many of you have too. It'll never not be horrendous, but every time I think I've got a good handle on it, I learn something new that's just awful. I had considered filming this there, but it became apparent really, really fast. That would have been completely inappropriate, disrespectful. So here I am on the rooftop of our hotel. There's gonna be some sirens, I'm sorry for that. Um, but we are gonna talk about suffering and it sounds weird, I'm excited to talk about suffering. Um, Cause suffering is a good thing and hopefully by the end of this, you'll understand why I say this. So uh, just to jump in, uh, well, let me, let me say this too. I know we've already talked about suffering some in recent weeks. Just a little reminder for us. I hope none of you are rolling your eyes going, golly, when are we going to get off this subject? We're, we're still on it because the Bible keeps talking about it. And the reason why the Bible keeps talking about it is because it matters. We need to be reminded that this is part of our life and experience as believers. So, so we're going to keep bringing this up and, and until, until we've learned it, right? Um, and the Bible keeps bringing it up because we haven't learned it yet. All let's say... Spend some time studying chapter 3. Don't teach chapter 3, but chapter 3 is going to give you some insights into chapter 4. That'll be really, really helpful. I would also encourage you, um, read this passage in the Amplified Bible. The Amplified Bible is so good about bringing some clarity to just a handful of things. I'm going to give you an example in just a second. But you can find one online. It's free online. Yeah, just look up 1 Peter 3 and 4, AMP. That's the, the abbreviated version. Bible Gateway will spit it right out for you. It's, it's great. So let's jump in. I really like verse three. It says, for the time that is, pa that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do. Let me read it to you in the Amplified Version. It says this, um, for the time already past is more than enough for doing what the unsaved Gentiles want you to do. I love this verse because in short, it's just saying this. I've spent enough of my life wasting time on sin. And I want nothing to do with that anymore. Yes, I'm going to be tempted. Yes, I'm still going to fail. But my time of, of seeking that satisfaction, intentionally, willfully wanting to disobey my father, those days are over. And my motive is this, because Christ suffered for me, even more specifically, because Jesus died to pay for those sins that I'm wrongfully desiring, I'm letting that motivate me to turn away from that stuff. I don't want it anymore. That's pretty forceful language, but that's the language that Peter's bringing into us. That's how we have to present it to our folks on Sunday as well. Christ died to pay for those sins. Stop it. We've wasted enough of our lives on sin. We know where that ends. Stop it. Pursue other things. Now jump down to verse six. Let me just say very, very briefly, do not get lost in the weeds of this verse. It actually makes the statement in the passage, scholars widely accept this interpretation. No, they don't. There is no widely accepted interpretation of this passage. I will say chapter 3 verse 19 discusses a little bit, a little bit of insight there. But the bottom line is this. We don't know exactly what it means that Jesus was down, uh, descended into hell is the way the Apostles' Creed puts it. We don't, we don't know exactly what that means. He was either declaring the gospel and salvation or just simply declaring his victory over sin and death and hell. But, but anyway, we don't know what exactly was going on there. Don't get lost in the weeds in that. Do get lost, and it's not weeds, this is just a field of goodness. Do get lost in verses seven through 11. If you set up shop and spent most, if not all your time on these verses, you're gonna do well on Sunday, I promise. This is so, so good. Look at verse seven. The end of all things is at hand, therefore be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Did you catch that? We need to be self-controlled and sober-minded. In other words, we need to avoid sin like we talked about in verse 3. Why? So that we can pray with clarity. And this is really, really cool. When we play with, pray with clarity, 
that actually helps us tremendously in this whole being self-controlled and sober-minded thing. It absolutely goes together. But you probably experienced this. When we're actively living in rebellious sin, something about that makes us not want to run to Jesus. It makes us want to hide. It takes away that desire to connect with him in the first place. This is why sin is so awful. It disconnects us from God. It doesn't disconnect God from us. He's always there. He's always listening. He's always ready for us to repent. But it just it's us building a wall up between them. And so he says, be sober-minded, be self-controlled, avoid sin for the sake of your prayers. Then he goes on to explain little, little things of suffering. You gotta catch this too. I think this is good. He says, uh, uh, keep loving one another because love covers a multitude of sins. The way he puts it, the way that's important is, is this. That leaves an open door, not even an open door. It says pretty clearly, people are going to sin against you. Love them anyway. If people are sinning against you, that in, in, in a very real way, that's a form of suffering. Now, not all sins are equal. Some are far more horrendous than others, but none of them are fun. By the way, you're going to sin against people from time to time too. So you're going to want that love to be abounding in other people's lives as well. But but here's the, the suffering dynamic. Jesus is not just saying bear it and grin it. Love people through that stuff. Then he goes on to talk about hospitality. He says, hey, be, be ready for hospitality no matter what and do it without grumbling. Why would I grumble about hospitality? Because it's not always convenient. It's not always fun. In fact, sometimes you have to be hospitable to people you don't want to be hospitable to. This is another small version of suffering. Again, why do we do these things? Because of what Jesus did for us. He is the motive. He's the example. He's the prize. He's the goal. We're doing these things for and because of him, period. End it with this. You read that last little section, again, talking about suffering again. I would just summarize it really simple by saying this. We have a choice. We can suffer because of our sin. You all know this, sin has, has consequences, right? I have students that come to me, not all the time, but from time to time they'll say, man, I'm, I'm having a terrible day. Why are you having a terrible day? Well, I'm grounded. Oh, why are you grounded? Well, I disobeyed my parents. Okay, I'm not sorry for you anymore. Like you're you're dealing with the consequence. I'm sorry that's terrible. I really am. I'm sorry you're dealing with the consequence of your sin, but that's part of the process. Sin leads to suffering. So we can choose to suffer because of our sin, or we can choose to suffer because we've been pursuing righteousness, which means people are going to make fun of us or mistreat us or abuse us or whatever. But if those are the choices... <laughs> there is a right and wrong choice. I want to choose to suffer for Christ's sake. So call your people to good suffering on Sunday. I know that sounds funny, but this this is the call to following Jesus. We don't want to suffer, but we're willing to. Why? Because he suffered. And we can rejoice that we have a new understanding, at least a little bit of what Jesus went through and, and how we relate to him. It's a beautiful thing. So suffer well. Guys, I love you. Can't wait to see you when I get home. Have a great Sunday. We'll talk to you later. Bye.